Good morning. If you can hear me, oh, I guess you can. Put your finger on your nose. If you can hear me, put your finger on your head. Perfect. Y'all are excellent listeners. I am not John Cheska. I am not Steven Weinberg. Ah, but I have the wonderful, wonderful opportunity to not only introduce them to you, but to welcome you to my school. I'm the librarian here at St. Anne's Belfield, and we are so excited that you are here with us today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I wanted to give a shout out to all the schools that were here, and I may, I may miss somebody, but I just wanted to let you know, if I can find my notes again, that we have students from Jackson Via, Burley Moran, yeah, clap, yeah, school pride. Crozet, Red Hill, Stony Point, Brownsville, St. Anne's Belfield, Scottsville, the Catholic School, and Greer. And did I miss any schools? Excellent. So we're going to wait for the last few people to get in and get seated. Uh, I know you're anxious. I know you're ready. Should I dance for you? Uh, no, not going to do it. Maybe I'll sing? No. I could tell you a story. Uh, we don't have time. I do like to dance, though. Raise your hand if you like to dance. Woo, yeah. The boys and girls here tell me I dance like an old lady. I think that's because I am an old lady. Thank you. What's your name? Chase. Chase? Thank you, Chase. Chase just told me I wasn't an old lady. I was fishing for that. Thank you, Chase. So, as we're waiting, I want you to just be thinking about what you know about our guests today. In your mind, I want you to start visualizing the books you've read by John Cheska, the stories that you remember that he created. Of course, one of my all-time favorites, I don't know about you, is Battle Bunny. Did y'all see Battle Bunny? That, that book is a book within a book, and everybody at my school that looks at it, well, not everybody, but some people, they bring it up to me and they say, Mrs. Gray, somebody wrote in this book. I'm like, yes, somebody did, and they meant to. And then I think of the true story of the three little pigs, one of my all-time favorites, the wolf was framed, he didn't do it, uh, so there's lots and lots. How am I doing, John? <laughs> Should I dance a little bit now? Never put a microphone in my hand. I just like it too much. 
Y'all are going to be a great audience, I can tell. I, you're good at listening. You're good at looking at the speaker, because when I look out now, I can see everybody's eyes. It's wonderful. Okay, I think we're maybe about to start. Uh, raise your hand if you want to take a guess at how many, how many people are visiting today with John Cheska. Okay, the girl in the teal-colored, greenish-blue, yep, you. How many people do you think are here? A hundred and thirty was her estimate, okay, look around. The young lady with the polka dots, yes. A thousand, she's getting warmer. The gentleman here on the first row, yep. A hundred and eighty, a hundred and eighty-seven. That's kind of cold, cold. The gentleman right here in the Virginia sweatshirt. He said 1,300. He is really pretty warm, pretty warm. Uh, the gentleman right there in the striped shirt in the second row. Yep, you. How many? 1,065. It's pretty warm, pretty warm. Going to do one more. The gentleman with the... Neon orange sweatshirt on the, with the swoosh. Yes. 1,350. Would you like me to tell you how many people are invited? Give or take a person or two. 1,250. 1,250. Look around. Miss Blunt, are there lots more people out the door? Okay, thank you. Okay, I just got the signal, boys and girls. If you can hear me, put your hands in your lap. If you can hear me, put your feet in front of you. And if you can hear the quiet, you'll know we're about ready to begin. It's my pleasure today to be able to introduce um, a literary superstar. I feel very excited to have Mr. John Cheska visiting all of us today. As you know, he is a very famous author of books like The Stinky Cheese Man, Battle Bunny, The True Story of the Three Little Pigs. One of my favorites, Baloney. Took me forever to figure that one out, but Baloney. He also has the Time Warp Trio series, which my second and third graders really enjoy, and a series of new books, uh, relatively new, about a young boy named Frank Einstein. So if you haven't, if you haven't read those yet, you might want to look into them. Um, I especially liked Frank Einstein and the antimatter uh, motor. Along with Mr. Cheska today, we have an illustrator who has written and illustrated one book called, and it's appropriate at this time of year, Rex Finds an Egg, 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 yeah. And a book that's coming out that all of you will be able to 
understand, must be this tall. His name is Steven Weinberg. And so without further ado, please join me in welcoming John Cheska and Steven Weinberg. Good morning. Oh, hello, guys. It's so good to see all 1,253 of you. I was 54. 54, yeah. yeah. Stephen and I were counting as we came in. Well, I'm John Sheska. And I'm Stephen Weinberg. And we've decided today that we would show you the most incredible inside secrets about bookmaking. You can't tell anyone else after this presentation. Do not tell anyone else. It's just between us. I know last year Kate D. Camillo was here. Did anyone see Kate D. Camillo? Oh, nice. She's a writer friend of ours, but she doesn't tell you the real secrets. So we're going to tell you the real secrets. We thought we might show you a few books. Yeah, read you a few books. Stephen's going to draw a little bit. Oh, and then we thought we would let you ask questions, because we also love to get questions. That's where we get our best ideas from. We need your help. Yeah, and we get a lot of questions like, where do you get your ideas? How tall are you? How much money do you make? Um, why do you guys wear slightly matching blazers? <laughs> what kind of car do you drive? If you had a rocket ship, what kind would you have? Lots of questions like that. But so, so just keep thinking of those, or we might actually answer your questions as we're talking. Yeah, but you're probably wondering, how did John and I know each other? Why are we here today together? I was just wondering about that. How do we know each other, Stephen? It was one day on the Great Wall of China where I what? saw John. What? <laughs> That's Stephen and I standing on the Great Wall of China with my son Jake in between us. And then I saw him again. We went fishing together. John or we Koshuk. just like to wear pants like that. And then one day my washing machine broke down. <laughs> I had to help Stephen with his washing machine. He didn't know how to work it. But the real reason, and I made a very detailed graph, a family tree. <laughs> Wait a minute, to show what is you guys. that a picture of, Stephen? This is how I know John. That's John. He's got the medal. That's his wife, Jerry. Oh, yeah, that looks like me, Carta. That's his son, Jake, who was on the Great Wall of China. And then the other one, with the great bangs and the lipstick, that's my wife, Casey. Oh, Stephen fell in love with Casey. Oh, that's not nice. you, Casey. <laughs> Different Casey. Oh, Casey Sheska. Yeah, because I have two kids. That's my daughter, Casey, who's the oldest, and then my son, Jake. And Casey met Stephen around the world. Yeah, we actually met all the way in Morocco. We lived all over the world. We lived in China and West Africa. She wrote a book about it that I got to illustrate. This is for folks who are a little bit older. <laughs> and even in this book, John snuck into that. I can't keep him out of my life. Oh, that's a good picture of me. I'm up on the top Can there you guys almost. find John? <laughs> What's so distinctive about John? So we don't handsome. have to answer that. The handsomeness. <laughs> the, the sheer handsomeness, yes. But so when I taught in China, I taught kids who are, who's in second grade? Ooh. These are my second graders in Beijing. And that's where I really learned how smart you guys are and how funny you guys are. And I decided I might want to do this thing where I could write stories for you. Because I love singing songs with you guys. Who can know what song we're singing? Oh, nice guess. Very yeah. good. Head, shoulders, rest, knees, all that. I also taught some kids in West Africa. They're a little older. But I wanted to read to you guys my first book. Can we do that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to read the first part of the title, and then I want you guys to say egg, egg, egg. Are you ready? Rex finds Anne. All right, let's go a little quieter. Rex finds Anne. But 
This time, really, really quiet, Rex finds Anne. Even quieter, Rex finds Anne. Oh, that's good. Okay, and now I'm going to read the first part of the title, and then you guys are going to say, egg, 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 as loud as you can. Are you ready? Rex finds Anne. Wow. That's a world record. I don't think I ever want to beat that. <clears throat> Are you guys ready for the story? Rex finds Anne. Grumble. Now he must run. Rah. Rex loves his. He doesn't see the cliff, cliff, cliff. Dunk. He's underwater now. Rex floats. Rex swoops. Jump, jump, jump. Rex slides. Rex tumbles. Rex bounces. Oh, you're going to love this next page. And Rex rolls. <laughs> Until Rex is back at the nest, nest, nest. Grumble. But then. <laughs> oh no. What happens when an egg hits the ground? It goes. Thud. Egg. Rex really found a. Rock! Rock? On three. I need you guys to all yell rock. One, two, three. And maybe a new friend, friend, friend. Grumble. Uh-oh, what happens when a T-Rex is hungry? He wants some lunch, lunch, lunch. <laughs> the end. That was amazing. Thank you, egg readers. Wow. I have never heard so many <laughs> eggs. Well, a, a question that Stephen and I get a lot of times was that one, like, how did you guys start? Like, how did you become writers? Or where do you get your ideas? And you know, one place that we both get our ideas is from growing up in different kind of families. Um, so this was my family. I have five brothers and no sisters. So it's all boys. There's Jim, John, Tom, Greg, Brian, and what's his head? Jeff. <laughs> we forgot about Jeff, sorry. He was the last one. And my mom was a nurse, and my dad was a school principal. And both of those jobs came in very handy, because if somebody got broken, my mom could fix them, and that happened once in a while. And then my dad could also keep control of us at the dining room table if we got crazy, because that happened too, because the favorite thing we used to love to do in the Sheska house was wrestle. Like, we wrestled all the time. We would wake up and wrestle. We would go to breakfast and wrestle. We would go to school and wrestle. We'd go to the bathroom and wrestle. <laughs> I was a little awkward. And one time we knocked down the whole bathroom door because Jeff was trying to hide in there. So we just smashed it down. <laughs> we had to get him. But my mom made a rule. 
She said, that's it. I've had enough of it. You guys are breaking stuff left and right. I've got a brand new couch and a brand new lamp and a brand new table in the living room. So no wrestling in the living room, ever. So we were like, oh, man, that's a good place to wrestle. <laughs> but we tried not to wrestle in the living room until one time I was walking through the living room and somebody jumped on me like a monkey, like a spider monkey. And he just grabbed me by the neck and he was hanging on my back and I almost couldn't breathe, but I, knew, I, I just remembered the rule. I said, you can't wrestle, Mom, just don't wrestle. And I didn't even know who it was because I couldn't see him, so I tried to punch his head. I was just like, get off me, we can't wrestle. But he still hung on. And then I tried to kick him off me, like backwards like that, but I still couldn't get him off me. And you know, it was Jim, because he was a little bit bigger than me, and I couldn't shake him off. So I tried to run backwards into the wall and smash him. That still didn't work. But I finally figured out what to do. I flipped him. Like right over, I just leaned board and I went whoosh, And he went off me and landed on the couch. Which was great. For Jim, he didn't break his head, but it was very bad for the couch. Because the two front legs broke off the couch. It just went like <laughs> And then we thought, I said, oh man, we are in trouble. We better run away. We could go live in the woods. Like take some cookies and an apple and we'll be fine. And Jim said, no, don't worry. I'll tell mom what happened. I said, I don't care. I think we should get out of here. So I ran out of the room as fast as I could. But guess who I ran into? <laughs> yeah, how'd you know? Yeah, my mom was right there. Because moms have that mom radar, you know? They just know something happened. So my mom grabbed onto me so I couldn't escape. And I was still trying to run. And she said, wait a minute. Where are you going? What happened in here? And she looked around the room. She said, there's my lamp. There's my table. What happened to my couch? Because <laughs> it was all weird like that. And I said, like, I... And she said, what happened? And Jim said, oh, I'll tell you what happened. John did it. I was like, no way, that wasn't my fault, I didn't do it. Uh, Tom did it. And then Tom said, no way, Greg did it. Greg said, uh-uh, I didn't do it. Brian did it. And then guess what Brian said? No, I didn't do it, Jeff did it. And then Jeff was the littlest one, so he was just like, uh, uh the dog did it. <laughs> So I think that's who got blamed for everything in our family, the dog, and Jeff. <laughs> but you know what? That's where I figured out if you're the one who tells the story, you don't get in so much trouble usually. So it's good to be the guy who tells the story or draws the pictures because then you get to put the story together. So that's what I have. Oh, the other place I learned a lot about storytelling uh, was from dinosaurs, <laughs> teaching school. I taught school in New York for 10 years, a little bit of second grade, third grade. And then I did this book, and the Stinky Cheese Man, and the Time Warp Trio, and Math Curse, Science Verse. Oh, and here's Battle Bunny, which does look like something terrible happened to it. Space heads that Steven worked on too with Casey. And Knucklehead. <laughs> so, in fact, that's where all these stories are collected in this book, Knucklehead, because that's what my dad used to call us. Because I think he would forget our names sometimes. Like he would be yelling at us, saying, Jim, John, you, Greg, you Knucklehead, stop doing that. <laughs> Or he would say, who is the knucklehead who put the army man in the toaster? That was Jim. See, because I'm the nicest brother, also the holiest one. I don't know if you knew that, Stephen. I think there's a comic book in there. <laughs> oh, and here's all the brothers. Well, most of them. 
Oh, maybe I better show you this one. This story is called, sorry, Greg. Do you know what that's a picture of? Yeah, it's an x-ray of a broken collarbone. You know, you can actually feel this bone. It's the little one right here. Did you know that that only takes like five pounds of pressure to break? Like, we didn't know that until one day Jim and I were going to go out and play, and my mom said, hey, why don't you guys let Greg play with you? And Jim and I looked at him, we were like, no way, he's our little brother, he's scrawny. And then my mom said, no, come on, Greg loves you. He wants to play with you. And we looked at Greg and we were like, no, we don't like Greg. <laughs> and then my mom said, well, I'll tell you what, why don't you and Jim just let Greg play with you? So we were like, okay, we're sorry, we'll let Greg play with us. And we played a lot of games. Like we played basketball, football, baseball, hockey, soccer, lacrosse, ping pong, uh, billiards, run around, smash people. We also played games we invented. Like, oh, should we tell this crew this, Stephen? It might become a lot of it. It might become a lot. Well, don't tell anyone where you heard about this game. Or oh, I know what, if someone asks you, just say, Kate DiCamillo told me. Okay, everyone say that. Say, Kate DiCamillo told me. Oh, that's perfect. I think we can say anything now. Yeah, now we yeah. can say anything. So the game we invented was called Ghost Rider. And what you would do is you would get on your bicycle and ride to the playground, and we would ride underneath those monkey bars, you know, the metal bars like that? And then we'd grab onto the bars, and you let your bike go. <laughs> And it just rides by itself like there's a ghost pedaling on it. But then we thought of an even better game, Double Ghost Rider. So two people ride their bikes under the monkey bars, you grab on, and then two bikes go and like fight each other like there's ghosts fighting. But then we thought of an even better game. Yes, Triple Ghost Rider. Kate DiCamillo thought that up. But three people just kind of smash, so that's not very good. Uh, we didn't want Greg to get hurt playing that game, so we played another game called Slaughter Ball. <laughs> I think these guys know Slaughter Ball. I think they do. So in Slaughter Ball, Kate DiCamillo told me, you get a whole bunch of people, one football, you throw the football up in the air, And you all go home and have pudding, right? Not exactly. It's like the person who catches the ball, everyone tries to smash them and tackle them and slaughter them. And then the, one, the other people, the one person who has the ball has to run around and not get slaughtered. It's a very good game, Stephen. I, I think we should not play it right now. <laughs> not right now, maybe. <laughs> but it's a good game for just, it's got very simple rules. Well, one time we were playing slaughter ball and Greg kind of got tangled up in one of the big pileups and we heard something go and then everyone got up from the pile, and Greg was the last one. He got up, and he was going like, ow, <laughs> And his arm was hanging kind of funny. And we said, like, oh, no, something happened. We better take Greg back home. So we took Greg back home to my mom, and my mom looked at him because she was a nurse, and, and we said to her, oh, sorry, Mom, I think we broke Greg. <laughs> she said, yeah, you broke his collarbone. Now we gotta wrap him up. And when you get your collarbone broken, you have to get a thing that looks kinda like shoulder pads. So you look like this, um, which is kinda goofy. And the bad news for Greg was, uh, we ended up breaking his collarbone like four times. Maybe five, I'm not sure. <laughs> Accidentally, we didn't do it on purpose. He kept getting in the way and my mom kept saying, play with Greg. So almost every picture we have of Greg he looks like this. Oops. <laughs> See, those aren't his regular shoulders. It's kind of his pad things. We didn't do that to his ears, though. Those are his regular ears. Wow, so that's, that's one place you can get ideas to tell your stories. You guys can tell stories about your brothers or your sisters or your mom or your dad 
or your crazy uncle, who everyone says, don't talk about him. Not always, though. Not, oh, not always, though. <laughs> well, Stephen, where do you get your ideas? I always think back to when I was your guy's age. Because when I was your age, I looked like this. Oh, you man. You can laugh. You don't have to. <laughs> and I really wanted to be tall. I think it worked out pretty good for me. But for a long stretch, I was not tall at all. And I would stand on things, and I would hold things over my head. Would that make me tall? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I really wanted to be tall because I'm the younger brother. And my brother looks like this. And it's close, right? He's a Stephen, you're bit. almost as tall as the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> That's amazing. I felt really sad when I saw the Statue of Liberty. And I knew what it was like to be short because I was a younger brother, but also because I have a younger sister, and she is really short. <laughs> but so that's where I get my ideas. And my newest book, this book came out only two weeks ago. I want to read it to you guys. Can I? That's what it's called. It's a real book. I didn't show you guys, Rex, but I promise it's a real book. Are you guys ready? It's called, You Must Be This. You guys are good. And it's, it's with these two snakes named Frank and Harold. The yellow one's named Frank, and the red one's named Harold. And those are my grandpa's names. That's why I chose them. Frank and Harold are at the fair. Together, they are slamming. Riding, spinning, bouncing, and then they see the Rattler. Who here has ever been on a roller coaster? Ooh. Everybody. Who has not been able to go on a roller coaster because they're not tall enough? Because to ride the Rattler... You must be this tall. And is Fred tall enough? Is Harold the red one tall enough? No, he's not quite. The fair isn't fair. <laughs> Hang in there, Harold. Frank has a new idea. How about these costumes? Too scary, right? Too smelly? Too fancy. Oh, just right. This is totally going to work, right, guys? Oh, I don't know. Ah, oh, you must be this tall. No fair. Hang in there, Harold. Frank has a new idea. Together, they stretch, yank, reach, pull. And this time it's totally going to work, right? <laughs> nope. You still must be this tall. I know he's cheating. Harold is short. And Frank is tall. And one pig stands between them and the rattler. Is he a nice pig? Or does he? Where'd the pig go? Where'd he go? Where's the pig? I can't see the pig anywhere. Where is he? Is he down there? Is he back there? Where's the pig? Did they eat the pig to go on the roller coaster? <laughs> that was amazing. The end. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> wow, that was... I don't know if that was a happy ending or not, Stephen. <laughs> was that a happy ending, guys? Yeah! Yeah, I guess so, because the pig came back out. In fact, this is one of my favorite pictures in the book. The pig is just kind of sitting there <laughs> in a bunch of, like, snake saliva, I guess. Yeah. So I guess that's a happy ending. Very happy. <laughs> Well, I should probably also tell you guys another um, part about what I do as a writer. So I went to school 
Uh, and I just loved reading all the time when I was little. I started loving Green Eggs and Ham when I read it. Or has anyone ever read the book called Go Dog Go? Oh, nice. Because that was kind of what my family looked like. It was a bunch of colored dogs driving around in cars until they have a party in a tree. <laughs> Which I thought, you know what, that would be kind of fun to write something like that. So I wrote stories when I was going to school in second and third grade. But I also loved science, so I studied that. So I kind of did both of those things. And then I moved to New York, where I live now. Um, and I'd been writing books for a while. I taught school for a while. And I did those books like The Three Pigs and The Stinky Cheese Man. And then one day, I got a phone call from the president. And he said, how would you like to be the ambassador of children's books? And I said, this sounds like a prank call. I'm hanging up. So I hung up. But then they called back. And they said, no, we really want you to be the ambassador. And I said, do I get something great, like a helicopter or a rocket? And they said, no, you get a medal. So I went, OK, I'll do that. So I went to Washington and met the president then. And it's this guy, George Bush, and his wife, Laura, who was a librarian. And I got a medal to be the ambassador, which means whatever I say, people have to do, Stephen. Well, you've got me on stage, so what's going to happen next? <laughs> Can you dance like a monkey? It's true, guys. No, it's just a question. I don't, I don't oh, know. oh, yeah. I yes, I can. Not. Oh, good. I'll remember that for later. <laughs> so, like kids ask, so what do you do when you're writing? And so this is what I do. I just hang out at home with my medal or my cape or my car. I thought you didn't have a car because you lived in New York City, John. Or I drive my boat. Or I zip around in my jet. Or if I really want to go someplace far away, I take my rocket. <laughs> well, maybe not exactly. Because I probably should tell you guys the other thing that I do and that Stephen does too. We're both writers, so we both make things up. <laughs> Some people might call it lying. We call it fiction. Yeah, fiction's a better word, I think. Oh, I should show you some of this book, because this is the latest book, Frank Einstein. Uh, and it's about this guy who's a genius. He's kind of like Albert Einstein, that famous scientist, but He's also like Frankenstein in that he creates monsters. Well, not exactly monsters, uh, but robots. Yeah, so here's Frank. He's just hanging around. And he helps these robots make themselves. So the first robot that gets made is Clink. He's made out of all the best parts. He's got the fastest super processor. He's got the most memory. Look at all those attachments he's got, a hair dryer, a magnet. <laughs> a rubber glove. <laughs> and then another robot makes himself, uh, but he's, there's not so many good parts left, so he makes himself, and he's named Clank. Because he's kind of not so smart. He doesn't have very much memory. He doesn't move very fast. But he does love to hug people because he's made from a hug-me-monkey doll. Though the other part that's good about Frank is he loves jokes. And in fact, he loves jokes so much he tells them all the time, but that drives this guy crazy. He drives Clink nuts. Because Clink is so smart, but he doesn't understand jokes. Do you know anybody like that? Like they're so smart they don't, well we don't have to point at anybody I guess. Oh no, no point. But he's, he tells a joke every book. So Clank in book one says, would you like to hear a very funny joke? And Clink says, no. It's a very funny joke. No. It's a very, very, very funny joke. No! 
Because every time you tell me a joke, I start thinking about it and thinking about it, and my head blows up. Okay. Knock, knock. No! Knock, knock. No! I don't want my head to blow up. Ooh. Where'd you go, Clank? Knock, knock. No! Oh, okay. Knock, knock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who is there? Boo. Boo who? Boo who, you big crybaby? You do not have to cry about it. Ha 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 ha. Ha, 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 And then Clink's head blows up. But luckily, Clink's very smart, so he puts himself back together. Don't worry. It's all real science, too. <laughs> yeah, it's all real science. Yeah, mostly. But in this book, there's also a bad guy. Because there's always a bad guy, right? So Frank and the robots make an invention, but every time... This guy tries to steal it. Thomas Edison. You might have heard of him before. And his assistant, Mr. Chimp, who actually is a chimpanzee, and he's strong enough to lift three people and bite your face off. <laughs> so don't mess with Chimp, Stephen. But... He also helps steal the inventions, too. So the guys make inventions out of matter. And this is the second book. They make an electro finger that has all kinds of electricity. The third book is maybe the most controversial. I don't know if you guys can handle this. All right. Do you think this, how does this crowd look, Stephen? They look really smart. Okay. In this book, they make a brain turbo. So what they're doing is they study all the parts of the body and they try to help their friend, Jane Goodall, become a faster baseball pitcher. So Jane Goodall can throw a fastball 54 miles an hour, but she wants to throw it faster. So the guys study the human body and they realize, hey, you know what we could do? We could maybe give you a bigger arm muscle. So do you guys know what the biggest muscle in the human body is? Any guesses? The biggest muscle. What do you think? No? Good guess. Not the Don't brain. Look at me. Yeah, what do you think? Maybe the leg. You're getting closer. Yes, what do you think? The arm is a good guess. I'll tell you guys what it is. It's actually your butt muscle. <laughs> It's a pretty big muscle because it's got to move a lot of stuff. It moves and it's so got, much. It's got the best name, too. So the official name of your butt muscle is the gluteus maximus. It's very official sounding. So everyone say gluteus maximus. Maximus. Doesn't that sound good? It sounds like a wrestler or maybe a Roman senator or something. A very dignified Roman very senator. Very dignified. So what the guys decide to do is they say, what if we put your gluteus maximus on your arm, then you could really pitch the ball fast, like 90 miles an hour. That's a horrible idea. And yeah, that's what Jane Goodall, she said. She said, that's a terrible idea. So they try it out on Clank, and they put a gluteus maximus muscle on his arm, and he throws his whole arm off. <laughs> his arm just goes like, choo! <laughs> so Jane Goodall says, forget it, I'm not doing that. But the guys do invent actually a pretty cool thing that makes your brain better. So the first book is Antimatter, the second book, Electro Finger, third book, Brain Turbo. And there's going to be six books all together. And then if you read all six books, you will be a genius. Or Stephen will give you your money back. I, we didn't talk about this at all. Oh, no, I guess we didn't. Would that be okay? No, maybe not. 
Oh, and here's the next one that's coming out, Frank Einstein and the Evo belt. He makes an evolution belt so he can become a dinosaur or he can become a Superman in the future, or we don't know. We don't know what could come next. Whoa. All right, I think we've freaked people out, Stephen. You better tell a them a little bit about where you get some other ideas. Well, we kind of want to see what your ideas are, because oh, that's, that's what we want to do next. But before we do that, I want to show you guys something that I think is really cool. When I was in kindergarten, this was my notebook. It's so old, right? And every morning, beginning of kindergarten, I had this time where I could, <clears throat> I could either draw or I could write pictures. And that's really where I got my start, because I love drawing. I would draw some pretty crazy pictures. <laughs> what the heck is that, Steve? What do you guys think I was drawing? Who has an idea? Yeah, what do you think? Oh, that's, a, that's, that's not what I was drawing. I can't draw cats, though. What do you think I was drawing? You there in the white. Monsters. What else? Over there. What do you think, sir? Clown. You know what's crazy about this drawing? I have no idea what I drew. <laughs> it was 30 years ago. It's got nice octopus legs. Yeah. <clears throat> but this was where I first realized I love to draw and I love to write. And I actually have my first story that I ever wrote. It's really good. Are you guys ready for it? <clears throat> Who likes hot dogs? Okay, it's called Hot Dogs, which is really good. <clears throat> Does my voice sound scary? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hot dogs. Summer is so fun. No school every day. A lot of hot dogs every day. The end. Wow. I'm glad you liked that story. Steven, that is a hard-hitting story. Hard-hitting story. And I love, that's me in the hot dog cart. <laughs> and there's only one hot dog left. It's got a lot of action in it. It's got characters. Yeah. It's got craziness. It's got a name for it. It's got a date on it. I think I messed up the date. I think I mixed up the 89 and 1890. Yeah, close enough. <laughs> but I think what I, what I figured out with this, which I'm sure you guys know, is one of the most important parts of a story is having a really good character. And I think everybody thinks that they are a really good character which is how I started this one. Yeah. But maybe we could make up a new character, because I'm happy to draw anything. Whoa. Hey, that's what we could do. Maybe we can help Steven construct a character, because that's one place where I start when I'm writing a story. I try to think up, like, what would be a weird character? Sometimes we... <laughs> Sometimes I like combining things. So maybe it's not just a kitty cat. Oh, maybe we could start with, like, the head of an oh, animal? Oh, that's a good idea, yeah. Okay, everyone close your eyes. Visualize an animal head. Animal. With a body, too, maybe, but just the animal. An animal head. Think an animal head. What kind of animal head are you thinking of? Okay, open your eyes. Uh, who's got an animal head? Yes. How about a fox head? A fox head. Like a red fox, maybe? What do you think of a red fox head, Stephen? All right, while Stephen will start drawing the red fox head, let's think of a completely different body. Some kind of animal. I want a second, I want a second head. Oh, you want a second head? Let's, let's have a, think of another second head. Um, somebody, yes. A bear head. Wow, fox head and a bear head? Is, can you do such a thing, Stephen? I think we can. Wow, this is the beauty of being an illustrator. You can do stuff that's not so, or anything. <laughs> that's what Stephen thinks. Fox head and a bear head. Now we need an, a body, some kind of body. Who's thinking animal body? Yes, in the coat, yeah. How about an elephant body, Stephen? What? A fox head and a bear head and an elephant body? What else do we need to go with that? Um, 
Maybe some good shoes. Oh, some <laughs> good shoes. Or yeah, I guess legs, right? Um, oh yeah, you got some legs, right? Maybe just some, one other thing. What do we say? Like another animal thing. Yes, in the yellow. Or what about a slug body, too? Oh, okay, we'll start with the elephant. Like half elephant, half slug. Wow. We've got elephant feet, fox head, bear body, other part of... Oh, that's disgusting. That's perfectly disgusting. Oh, he's got little slug things on his head. And then the next part that Stephen and I like to do... <laughs> That's horribly weird looking. Maybe we should give it something nice like tiger stripes. Yeah, who doesn't love tiger stripes? <laughs> oh, that looks way better. Much better. <laughs> and then the next thing we think after you have your character, it kind of helps to have some action that the character is doing. Like what would this character want? Just think if you were ha part bear, part fox, part slug, part elephant, part tiger, <laughs> you'd have a lot of desires, I think. Yes. What, what would you like to do if you were that animal? <laughs> Run around in circles, maybe? Um, how about somebody from this side? Yes, in the front there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he'd probably want to catch something because the bear wants to go catch something. Hmm. Or maybe where does he live? What do you think? Oh, you know, how about a friend? <laughs> That's even better. I'm... Oh, because you do want two characters for things to happen. Yeah, what do you think? He would definitely want to scare people, don't you think? I love that. I think he's already scaring people, though. Yeah, we'll make him scary. Let's create one whole other character. How about another head? Yes. Yeah. Oh, a goose head. A goose head. <laughs> That's maybe not so scary. I like that. Oh, and we'll put a different body with him. Yes. What kind? A guinea pig body. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so a goose head and a guinea pig body. So that's, he's not so scary, right? <laughs> that... How about another head? Why not? Um, let's go farther in the back. Yes, on the side there in the purple. Scream it out as loud as you can. He wants a new head. <laughs> I like that. What kind of head would he like? Yes. Tiger. Tiger head. So goose, tiger, guinea pig, and fox, bear, elephant, slug. Wow. You guys are official writers now. You know what? Do we have a few minutes for questions. Yeah, you know what? Um, I'm not quite sure how we would do this. Oh, here's our librarian. What do you think the best way for questions is? We have a microphone. Oh, all right. How about if you find a few question type people? Oh, you want to take this one instead? Would that be easier if I give you the portable? So boys and girls, if you have a question that hasn't been answered yet today and you'd like to ask uh, Mr. Uh, Sheska or Mr. Weinberg, please tell them your name. Wayne. Why did you want to start writing books? That's a really good question. <clears throat> I don't know. I really just started writing stories. I think it was 
from here on, I realized that I just kind of love doing it. I remember having a day when I think I was in third grade, I walked home and I was really not liking math class or science class. And I was like, oh, I wish I could just write stories and draw pictures all day. And that's kind of where I kind of turned around and realized I might be able to. So yeah, that's kind of where I started. Okay, you want another? Cortland. How did you write all those books? How did, you, how did you write all those books? Ooh, that's a good question. It takes a lot of work. So you, it's like having homework all the time. You really have to sit down and write. So a, a book like The Stinky Cheese Man might have taken me like almost half a year to keep writing and rewriting. And then Stephen does books. He does both jobs. He writes and then he draws them, so sometimes it takes a year. Yes? My name is Hannah. Um, have you ever wrote a book with both of you in it? Both of us in it? No. If we were to, what would it be about? Do you guys have any ideas? Mm, she doesn't. Any ideas about what it'd be about? Um, them fighting. Fighting? All right, well, we can just start now. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, let's see. Lexi? How old were you when you started writing books? I started writing stories when I was in second and third grade. I would write school stories, uh, but I just kept writing the whole time. And then my first book came out when I was out of college. So it took a long time. How about you, Stephen? When did you start? Yeah, I started in kindergarten, but there is a long delay. I don't know what the publishers are thinking, because I think we both had really good ideas. Yeah, the hot dog one. Um, but then my first book only came out two years ago. So if I am 105 years old, I would have been 103, right? So I kind of think we're out of time, unfortunately. These boys and girls have to get back to school. So would you please join me in thanking uh, John and Stephen? This, this has been an am amazing event. I, I don't know if you saw, I was kind of sitting in the very back. You were so wonderfully attentive. You were excellent listeners. I don't know that they've ever had a better audience, so I want to thank you. And now I need you to really be good listeners because you're going to listen to your teachers. We have to get 1,200, 1,200, and what did you say, 54? 1,254 people out and back on their buses. So we kind of have to do this um, one section at a time. So those boys and girls from Greer, thank you for coming today. We're gonna let you exit first. And teachers, if you'll take them out that, that back door. And Burnley Moran, we're going to get you to exit out this door, okay? So Burnley Moran, listen to your teachers. Oh, oh. Um, we weren't doing this, sorry. Uh, huh? Oh, yeah, it was good storytelling. So Burley Moran is heading out. Greer is heading out. We have this door over here. <laughs> Jackson Via, would you mind going out this door? So Jackson Via, please listen to your teachers. They're going to take you out this door, the double one, and then you'll just come around. Thanks.
Um, and I'll meet you back in the library. I'll grab, I'll meet you back in the library. Yeah. I'll get my second and third second. Second. Yeah. 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 That's very nice of you. Who do you want? Sophia! Whoa! That was okay. That was okay. <laughs> Did she see you? Did she see you? <laughs> so what school are y'all? What school are you? Oh, okay, so you're going out that way. So, what is your school? This is Crozé. Crozé. Do you want to just, when you see the numbers? You don't have to yell. <laughs> so he screamed. Ah. He had a friend here he wanted to see. So teachers, if you'll just follow suit as you see a, an area clearing, you can take your children. Back to the bus. Thank you again.